You're a bully. You've got your bully. Have you? Well, you've got your bully. Hey guys. No, I haven't died. I am still around. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Uh, been a long time, and I know. Sorry. Um, so, where have I been? I've been busy doing other stuff on my modelling channel and basically just trying to get things done on this around the bloody weather. As you know, earlier in the year I was held back by, you know, neighbours being at home and making loads of noise with the shutdown and everything. So I didn't get much done then. Um, then we had a, a spell of lovely weather, so I got all the sandblasting done. And then we had a spell of really horrendous wet weather, sort of rusted again. So I sandblasted it again. And then we had a spell of really wet weather again. And then we had a spell of really hot weather. And then we had another spell of wet weather. So now I've got this chassis here and as you can see, it's all rusty again. And I'm not going to sandblast it again because every time you sandblast it, you've got to wash it all out with, um, with the pressure washer. Make sure you get all the, the grit and everything out of it. And, uh, and, then, and then basically start again and, <laughs> and it rusts. So unless it's a really nice day where it's really dry, it will flash rust and then you can paint it. But we just haven't got that luxury at the moment. So basically I'm going to go along with this and I'm going to wire brush it as I go and paint it in stages. I'm going to use the Coralus QDR, which is a black primer and um, basically do it in stages, thinning it with uh, xylene, go from there. Um, one thing I do, I do want to clarify, I have been dealing with Artright paints. Um, they've been extremely difficult to get hold of of late because of the, the, the virus. Um, and they, they do do a, they, they've got great customer service, to be, to be fair. Um, there's been a couple of mistakes in the ordering, but it's been sorted out like that. So, but the one thing I'm concerned about is the technical information I've been getting from them. So obviously I'm concerned about what I tell you guys. Now, I was told categorically by them that you could not overcoat QDR with the RF-16. That's their gloss black Coralus paint. Well, I've just looked at the spreadsheet or the tech sheet to check on thinning and how much you should thin it in what temperatures and stuff. And I noticed on the bottom of there, it says it can be overcoated with Coralus S, which is the red primer. It can be overcoated with RF-16 and other alkaline paints. So I phoned them up. They said, no, categorically, definitely you can actually overcoat it with RF-16. So if you want a gloss black chassis, you can use the QDR or the RF-16 as your base and then use the gloss black as your finished coat. I personally want a semi-gloss finish. The QDR gives a nice finish, but I do want something a bit more semi-gloss. For me, it's a bit too matte and I think it might hold moisture. I think we know what I mean. Matte paints tend to be kind of almost like porous. It's almost like primer. It doesn't dry as fast. The water doesn't run off it like it does with gloss paint. So I'm um, not really sure I want a gloss finish. I think it'll look tacky. So spoke to the guy he said look I've got to go on a rush he's probably going down to the pub with his mates or something it's Friday lunchtime so <laughs> he said to email him and he'll give me all the answers I want so I'm now going to deal directly with Coralus so basically anything I tell you from now on will be from the horse's mouth um, I'm a little bit concerned that anything I've said in the past may be incorrect because I've been speaking to Arkwright and they've given me information which proves to perhaps not be true now Arkwright do a um, it's just, just misunderstandings. I'm not slagging anybody off or sticking knives in anyone's back. Anyone's back. This is just misunderstandings. It's, it's quite a large range of products and there are some you can't use with others. So that's where it's down to. Um, so as I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this, this QDR. Oh, that's what I was going to say. The Coralus or, or Arkwright sell a, a product which is Coralus. Uh, which is called direct to metal paint and that's got a semi-gloss finish to it and they've told me I can overcoat this with that so if that's the case I was only going to do the um, the rear cross member but if that's the case I'll probably do the whole chassis with it so uh, I'll be ordering some more of that so I'm um, waiting for this this guy to come back to me from Carlos and then we'll go from there but for now I need to do some wire brushing and get some painting done so what we'll do we'll take you over to the chassis now and show you what it's like and then um and then we'll come back after that and look at it painted. Okay, so if we look at our chassis now, as you can see, I've got to weld these plates in here first before I do anything else. Um, you can see that it's quite rusty, but it's a lot worse than it looks. Sorry, it looks a lot worse than it is. As you can see, where I've sandblasted all around the welds and everything, the welds have rusted, which you would expect, but just a couple of strikes with a wire brush, and it's, it's gone. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing. And this paint is actually designed to be painted onto rust. 
so you don't need to fully sandblast it back to bare metal again and as you can see I only actually sandblasted the areas where uh, there was rust I didn't sandblast the whole thing um, but as you can see if you follow down the sides of the chassis I may as well have done the whole thing but my little blaster you know it took me uh, about three or four goes to get this done and I had to do it all again um, but you know as you can see it's just a case of well, I brush it off and it's absolutely fine but there's no real serious corrosion and inside here I don't know if it's, the camera's going to see in there no there's not enough light um, but basically all inside the chassis is lovely everything's clean as a whistle it's just it's the outside and if you notice around every single weld which is where it's rusty it's where they don't do weld prep in the factory shame on them I've also got this horrible plate here I think I might have shown this before I've got this plate here which holds the rear brake pipe there's only one on mine because it's um it's not got ABS it's just riveted in what but uh you know hey -oh. I may put a uh, drop of weld on there we'll see um but yeah so basically I need to just go around now and get get a coat of paint on this so that it doesn't rust anymore I did do a test when I did this rear cross member if you remember that was back in about 1974 I think <laughs> it seems that long ago um, none of that is rusted again but also what I did you can see on this A-frame if you look here you can see this rust on here you can see the bare metal and the rust I just put some of this QDR over the top of it and as you can see it hasn't rusted and that's been out in all that horrible weather if you live in the UK you'll know that we've had some awful weather we had two storms this has been through and that's without wire brushing or anything I just painted it on and um, that is quite incredible so it's obviously bloody good stuff um, but as I said this is the kind of finish you get and to me it's a little bit too matte I'd like it a bit more glossy really like the original was the other thing I've got to contend with which is a promo for um, wax oil I can show you around here you can see here you can see these rings around these holes that is actually wax oil where it's creeped out so I've got to go over it with xylene to get the wax oil off. You can see it here as well, and here. Um, so I've got to go over with xylene to get the wax oil off, and and then rub it back really because it's, it's quite glossy under there. It's preserved the paint and everything. So um, fair play to wax oil. That's actually it's still creeping out, and that's been in there for nine years. So um, nine and a half years now. So anyway, we'll get some work done, we'll get some uh, wire brushing done and we'll just basically, I'll come back and show you a bit of spraying I guess. I think you'd like to see that wouldn't you? And so there we go, all cleaned up, ready to paint. Now I've also done the welding underneath which I'll show you in a minute. I've decided to do the chassis in three sections. I'm going to kind of go from the back, both sides, up to here, okay, up to the rear trailing arm mounts. Then I'm going to do this side and then I'm going to do the other side. Reason being is if the weather turns it gets windy the Mustang has to come back in the garage this has to go back outside so if I clean it all up now like this ready to go and everything's all ready to paint and then I put it outside and it rains again back to square one so I'm going to sort of take it bit by bit just put the one coat on and then we can put the final two coats on we've we've seen from how good it is down here that one coat is going to be fine for a bit of initial weather protection so um there we go um as far as the paint goes, I have since spoken to the guys from Coralus again uh, via email. This is what it is, okay? This is the, the QDR is here, okay? That's how it comes from Coralus. And basically, um, Arkwright call it glass reinforced chassis paint, okay? So, but it's actually known as QDR3. But it's on their website, it's glass reinforced chassis paint. And it's a semi-gloss and it's called QDR. It's developed as a primer. It's got glass leaf in it, so it's extremely hard wearing. It can go directly on bare metal and it can go directly on rust as long as it's not all loose and flaking. So this like here, this is perfect. OK, now what he's actually told me is it needs to be an abraded, abraded surface. So this here where we've got the we've got the sandblasting around here, which hasn't taken the paint off, but where the paint, where the rust has taken the paint. So that's good. And he said a, a slightly corroded surface is good for a key for this paint to bite on. What you don't want is polished metal. You don't want to be highly polished. So even like where I've done the welding and then ground afterwards to remove any weld spatter, I've then gone over with a coarse grit and sort of roughed the, the surface up a bit. So really you want a sort of, you know, a, a finish like this, well, that, the paint will key and really bite into it. And 
we all know that with you know if we if we use like a normal half red acrylic primer and put it on on shiny aluminium it just you can rub it off with your fingernail put it on aluminium that's been you know rubbed over with some scotch bright and properly degreased and it sticks better so we we, we all know that i hope um but it turns out that where this happens is Coralus are the the company okay they are like the manufacturers they sell to industry they don't sell to the um the man on the street so basically what happens is Arkwright buy it in huge barrels decant it into smaller quantities for us in the restorations world and then Arkwright sell it so that was the reason for the confusion and basically Coralus are going to speak to our and they're going to now get their the facts completely straight because I remember I spoke to Paul um, I'm sure his name's Paul I'm sorry if it's not my um, a couple of months back and he absolutely categorically told me you cannot paint um, RF 16 over this and then I've looked at the spec sheet and, it's just, and it specifically says you can and Carlos has told me you can you definitely can paint RF 16 over this you can paint um, Carlos S over it if you want to the red stuff but it's also good as a one pack chassis paint. So you thin it down with some xylene, spray it on your chassis, good couple of coats, do the edges first, and then you're gonna end up with a really, really good tough chassis paint. So that's what I'm doing. You can see I've got it in the gun, I've done a test. I put some here in an old plastic container. This is my dog's um, Pro Fiber. Keeps her, uh, keeps her regular. And, um, and basically uh, done a test there. That's about 10% thinner and it's spraying through this little tiny I've got this little tiny gun here. I bought this paint stand thing off of Amazon and it's really a waste of time because as soon as you put it on with this thick hard rubber hose, it just pulls it over. So I'll have to redesign that. Um, I'll mount it to a base or something. So um, let me get the chassis flipped over. I'll show you the welding and then we'll do some painting. So here we are. There's the, um, those plates welded back into the chassis. So I've got the, um, the QDR is actually under there. So they've got some rust protection. They've also got zinc primer in there. Um, so they're all welded in. Uh, weld over here isn't very pretty. Or over here, uh, mask kept because it's got a bit colder now. My mask kept fogging up, so I couldn't see what I was doing. So I had to keep stopping it. But never mind. It's underneath. So, and it's every bit as neat as the uh, the other welding on the chassis. In some places, I mean, you can see it's not the best in the world, but um, there's some places the welding is absolutely beautiful. I mean, here it's uh, really, really nice. I'm around here. Look. So um, I'm now going to get the. the uh, the phone, the camera, on a stand, and I'm going to show you a bit of painting. I'll do the initial bit without a mask, just because I'll be doing edges and stuff, um, just so I can talk to you while I'm doing it, but believe me, when I'm spraying, I will, will be wearing a mask. Okay, so I've got the gun here, set at about 38 PSI, it's not very high, uh, trying to keep the atomization and the mist in the air to a minimum. Um, so basically, I've got also got the paint flow very low, so um, this is only a single action, this, it's only a single action adjustment on here. So um, all I've got is air pressure and the actual paint flow. So I'm keeping it fairly low because what I'm going to do first is go around all the edges. Now I want to get this piece of wire out of the way. This is the wire that is in here so I can re-pull the loom back through, which is a day I'm really looking forward to because when I pull the loom through, that will be the first day of the rebuild. Actually doing something constructive rather than destructive for a change. So let's see how this goes on. And it's, uh, very nice indeed. As I said, I've got this thinned with xylene. 10%. So that's what I'm saying. All I'm doing is all the edges first. you can see from this this is you know people that say you spray cans get yourself a cheap compressor get yourself a cheap spray gun this thing's peanuts you know it's so much better than you, you know you're never going to get that kind of pressure out of a spray can you need the air to atomize the paint and then you can control the level of paint you get in you just don't get anything like that with an aerosol so when when people tell you, you can use aerosols you can but why would you? Especially for something like this. I'm going to turn the pressure down a touch, actually. That's better. Just to make it more controllable, because I want to 
make sure I really get in all the nooks and crannies and all the corners. And there's going to be bits that get missed. It's unfortunate, it's the nature of the game, but um, when we do the overall spray with a bigger gun, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get them in. Are you still on camera? Yep. So we're going to get into that well. Come round this side. I think I may even go over with a brush in some areas, like in there, you can't get anything in there to get the paint down onto, onto this side of the weld, as it were. So, unless I come in like this. say this paint goes down absolutely beautifully I mean it's about 18 20 degrees and it's just it's going on and just drying it's really is nice Also finding a multitude of sins, scratches in the paint where I've been abrading it and everything. Sometimes you have to kind of take your head away and think, you know, it's a chassis for God's sakes. It's like it's a, a body kit. <laughs> So there we go. So I'm going to call it a day for this video there. Get on with some painting and I'll um, and I'll see you guys for the next one, which might be when it's all done. And then we'll look at the uh, start of the rebuild then and then the videos will get a lot more. Well, <laughs> they couldn't get any less frequent, could they? Um, they're going to get a lot more frequent and we're going to be really getting stuck into this. and. Once this is done and we've got the major chassis, uh, the major suspension components Sam lasted, we'll get them painted, then we can get back into the mechanicals and we get the gearbox finished off, we'll get the engine rebuilt. Um, the last thing I want to do is be messing around with sand and grit and stuff while I'm doing the engine and gearbox rebuild. So, um, so then guys, I'm holding the phone, um, so it's probably looking a bit weird, but basically I want to show you, there it is, that's how it looks. When it's painted and that's all you're going to see for now see you later bye